Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans back for Tuts Plus and it's that time in the month again where I'm doing a group of video tutorials and I'm actually doing two uh, longer tutorials, this one on um, iOS MIDI over Wi-Fi and how to hook it up to your Mac and then we're going to look at Ozone, mastering in Ozone for sort of an all-in-one, uh, one-stop sort of mastering solution for those of you that don't want millions of different plugins and then I'm going to do two quick tips or smaller tutorials um, on synthesis, two different synthesis techniques. So for this one, for hooking up your iOS devices, you're going to need several things. An iOS device, which is a bit of a no-brainer. So an iPhone or an iPad, pretty much any generation will do. Um, then you're going to need some kind of network device or you know, active network in your home. So I'm using a 802.11ac uh time capsule <laughs> uh, just had to recall that one for a second there but basically any reasonably fast network will do here um, then you're going to need an audio interface a mac uh, because we're doing a mac based tutorial here uh, with a door in it so a door loaded into it so i'm using logic but you know ableton cubase reason any of these would do fine and then a cable and an audio interface so i'm going to show you how to hook up the midi and then how to hook up the audio so we're going to be using the audio wired so basically here's a picture of it look it's hooked up into my ADA interface um, then going via optical into the Apollo so but as long as you've got two inputs you can use one of these sort of small cables and then we're going to hook up the MIDI over the Wi-Fi so let's do that first and at the minute you can see the iPad on the screen this is just being mirrored uh, over the air so at the minute, the audio is actually coming through the airplay. And it's, I don't know if you can see that, but the latency is <laughs> absolutely crazy. You would never use it like this. This is just so I can show you the application. I mean, I can change things on the iPad and you can see it happening there. Okay. So at the minute, let's just push that away. And now we're going to need to gonna go to the audio MIDI setup and go to the MIDI window and you're going to see something similar to this maybe not exactly the same because your devices will be different but you're going to see this network uh, window here so this is the one you want and I'm just going to delete this session here just to start from scratch okay let's disconnect that as well this is what how you'll see it you'll probably see your device here and uh, You'll, there'll be nothing in sessions unless you've set something up before but I'm assuming that you don't know how to do this so let's go add, add something here add a session and I'm just going to call it we called it iPad over air before uh, let's do the same thing okay and then you want to tick it so it's an active enabled session then you want to select your iPad from the list you might have other iOS devices there if you've got them switched on and hit connect you should see it come up over here in our participants window <laughs> um, and it'll say not not milliseconds zero milliseconds latency don't believe it for a second I don't know why it does that but um, there's quite a bit more than zero milliseconds I can tell you that much um, when we connect up by hardwired connection it does get a lot better and we, that's how you'd use it you know so let's close all this down and go back to logic um, in fact, just I'll just show you in the global settings. Um, I keep thinking I can control it by clicking on things on the screen there, but you can't. Uh, just make sure it's on low latency mode. This obviously varies app to app, right? But I'm going to keep background audio switched off. Everything else is switched off. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you've got it open, it'll pretty much, the iPad will pretty much react to the app that's open. So... I'm now going to close this down, okay? Um, yeah, you hear me trigger a note by accident there. Um, I'm going to close this down and put it on headphones. So I don't know if you saw that, but there's like a headphones output on the air, in the AirPlay section. So now, when I click it, it's going to be, uh, the latency will be a lot less. You can't hear anything yet because we need to hook it up to Logic. But to do that, we're going to go to Plus. We're going to go to External MIDI and tick use external instrument plugin 
Basically, this is a plugin that's very, very simple that allows you to route MIDI and audio into the same, uh, the same plugin. Let's just shut down the library there. And here we go. It's very plain looking, gets the job done though. Um, we need to select network iPad over air. This will show you all of your MIDI inputs and outputs in your studio, okay? And that's the one we want. The one, is, And that's why I think it's better to name it something slightly obscure rather than just network because you might have a few of those sessions in here. So we're calling this iPad over air, at least you know which one it is. Once that's selected, it should play back. I can see it playing back, you can't. <laughs> Uh, we need to select the right inputs. Now here, <laughs> this is all the inputs and outputs from my Apollo and my ADAT hooked up, but if you've got a smaller interface, it'll probably be very simple. You might only have four inputs. Just pick the ones that you've plugged in. Otherwise, uh, I'm going into nine and 10, which is the first two of my ADAT. Now we can hear it. And as soon as you do this, and this is just the headphone out into that input, the latency becomes much better because obviously it's only transmitting MIDI across uh, Wi-Fi, not picture and sound and MIDI. Um, as soon as you start doing that airplay stuff, the latency sort of triples or quadruples. It's, it's quite a staggering the amount of latency you get. But now, um, we've got a very usable system and we can just record in the same way as we would with any other MIDI synth. Um, now I'm altering that manually, um, it's not recording that MIDI data, um, I've not sort of attempted to do that yet, but you can then record, bounce that down into a, um, an audio track, and it's very good for recording sort of effects, and you can then adjust the uh, stuff real time on the screen, so it's sort of like having another hardware synth, and I found it to be perfectly usable. The latency still is pretty uh, high here, but there's a couple of things you can do to ensure that it's as low as possible. First up, don't have any sort of mastering processes on. I've just got some metering on mine, but you know, no sort of limiters or whatever on the master. And then you want to have it in low latency mode. Now the low latency modes here, you can see me clicking it. If that's not there, by the way, you can go to customize controls and ensure it's ticked. Okay and then it'll pop up and it looks like that. And what it does is if you've got anything else running, it may disable anything that's creating any latency. So if you've got plugins uh, that are perhaps on groups or on the master, it will knock those out to ensure that the, the audio stream is as uh, straightforward as possible. And then if you go to audio as well, we've got it on 64 samples. You know, if you can get away with 32, do it. Uh, make sure things like the process buffer range are on small, you know, to maybe turn software monitoring off, things like this, and just ensure you've got the right driver selected. And that's about as good as it's going to get. You know, obviously being closer to your router or even being wired if you can or whatever, having your, having your computer wired to the network and things like this, it's, it's all going to reduce latency. And I've found that if you've only got these basic bits of kit, so your computer, the, the iPad, a cable and an interface, this is the best way of doing it. This is the best and pretty much only way of doing it without a dedicated interface that does both MIDI and audio. I'm waiting on some eye connectivity gear that I'm probably going to be covering that is essentially going to do this job. You're going to plug straight into it and it's going to give you that instant hardware-like feel. But for, for the minute, if you absolutely need to play with your iOS app devices, this is the way to get it in. So hopefully this has been useful to you. Try it yourself with your iPhone or your iPad uh, with your latest apps. Give it a shot. Tell me how it goes. Tell me if you've got a better way of doing it or if you think I got something wrong or if you want to hear something else on this subject. I'm also going to be covering ozone and synthesis this month, so they, they'll probably come out reasonably uh, quickly. Um, questions and comments as always below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.